Hello, my name is Jeff Winkler. I'm the IB film teacher here at Denton High School, and I'm sitting with one of my students here who was given the assignment of studying a film theory of his choice. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Sam Tunnel. Hi, Sam. Uh, what film theory did you choose? I chose apparatus film theory. And why did you choose apparatus film theory? I was very interested in the idea that the execution of a film is incredibly important to how to the way the film turns out. So, film theory, apparatus film theory deals with the execution, I think. Mm -hmm. it. Okay, well, go ahead and tell me about this the theory. Well, basically what apparatus film theory is, is it's a theory that states that since everything in a film is about illustrating ideas, that everything the filmmaker does has meaning. So everything you see in a shot, from the lighting to the composition to things that you see about the angles, all of that is important. So everything in a film, as a whole, mm -hmm. has meaning. Yes. So it could, anything can be analyzed. That has exactly. Meaning. Okay. So you got a scene here from Punch Drunk Love. So basically, in this scene, talking about the idea of mise en scene, which is uh, yeah, so I'm things that you see in each individual yeah, shot. So you can, especially with this shot, which is stagnant and stays right here for quite a long time, you can analyze all the different things. Yeah, There's leading lines, the lines on the wall, because it direct your focus, to, uh, the colors, exactly how they show you, like what, it, it makes exactly his character almost disappear, um, and things about the lighting that it really isolates okay, what you're so looking at clarify, and I'm what sorry. your focus is. So Tenth all these little elements of the composition have meaning. Now, you're using a term here, mizzen and scene. What does mizzen and scene mean? Um, it That's means it. everything that within, well, almost as if you were to freeze the, the shot, everything that you can see within that shot is and, worth more than well, and different elements of just that one shot is mizzen well, and scene. Mizzen and scene literally means what's in the scene. The scene. It's French. <laughs> okay, and you can also talk about mizzen and shot. What's in a single shot you as well? Your name possibly. It's extension two fifteen. The name is Carter. Carter. Thank you very much, Carter. All right. Bye bye. And um, right about here is one of my favorite parts of this of this uh, scene shot is uh, when he starts to walk away and there's almost an, a a very long amount of darkness. And it, uh, before it, it reappears, almost like he's someone who could fade out, and that's kind of reveals some things about him that he fades away. And it also shows a transition from two worlds, that isolation world, and he goes through nothingness into the world we're looking at now. That it's, that it's so separated, his two, those two realities, those two places are so separated. Okay. So again, uh, the color choices are really important, especially in this shot, and you see this a lot throughout this movie, but um, that. It, that when he's here in this isolated world, he almost disappears into the background because the colors they have match the walls. It's a combination of blue and white, so everything he has around him is blue and white as well. White, so. so his shirt's white, his jacket's white, matching the walls with their white, and his yeah, and it makes it almost seem forgettable. Like so, he's nothingness blending into his environment. Yeah. Okay. Leading lines are something that's used a lot in a lot of different films, and it's a good example here. The lines in the walls they meet at the corner and he's in that corner so it's kind of like you can it, it, it leads your eyes to make you focus on that even though it's not the center of the shot you still tend to drift to where that is. One of the things I love about this shot is it's like the hallmark of rule of thirds I mean could you look where he's at he's on the left side of the thirds and the screen is also divided by uh, vertically yeah, with the thirds as well I mean you can't get it's hard to get any more literal on rule of thirds sort of drawing the lines on the <laughs> so screen himself and uh, the lighting in this scene is really important because you saw, like in the previous shot, it it it, it showing that it, it isolates him. How the lighting is very everything around him slowly fades fades out, and when he starts to walk away, he fades into the darkness and has to transition to get to get anywhere else. Like that's its own world, just that lit section. So the apparatus theory gives us the ability to analyze all these elements. Mm -hmm. What are some of the directors that use this? Who are some of them? Ex exactly. Paul Thomas Anderson uh, uses this. Uh, Steven Spielberg uses this a lot. Um, me it's, it's actually something that you can analyze with really any director, but mm -hmm. there are some directors who tend to like say that they use it more as opposed mm -hmm. to something that it's like implied. Because It's like Stanley Kubrick. Yeah. The man just, every shot means something. He and hides symbols in everything. Yeah, it, you can tell that there is something there and sometimes with directors they don't mean to put something but you can kind of tell that because of the way that films are just made in general that things turn out a certain way 
because of this theory, because of the idea that things need to mean something. This is one of the film, the, one of the film theories I love the most because I can look at this and I can analyze it. And I can pick it apart. I can look at it and just discover all these hidden meanings into it. And not only what's cool about that is you, you talk to some of these directors and say, "Hey, did you mean this when you did that?" A lot of them would say, "I had no idea," but did you pull that meaning out of it? That's great. I did it unintentionally. Exactly. Like that, it's something that that the viewers can get their own meaning using the idea of this theory that things can be interpreted different ways. Okay. Well, there's anything else you'd like to add to this? No. Okay. Well, thank you very much for talking to us today about this. All right.